But I think the biggest question about the work and the biggest question that I had hoped to raise in the paper was, was this question of kind of ethnographic projects and something that Hal Foster talks about in, in that famous essay uh, from the 90s. Can you all hear in the back, by the way? Without microphones, it's okay? Okay. Um, you know, this question of uh, artworks that, that um, put themselves into another culture, another economic strata, just another community, and in a way try to come back or report back or bring something back from those other places. Um, and in doing so, this is what Foster worries about doing so, sort of um, absorbing the, the sort of holiness of the oppressed, you know, the, the purity of someone who, is, who has no power, um, and then absolving the artist, absolving his or herself of any guilt or any complicity for partaking in the culture that does the oppressing. Um, and of course, going from Europe to Africa, we all, this, this instantly becomes kind of an issue. Um, and the whole kind of backstory of Billy Bao, which is a uh, Nigerian expatriate in Bilbao who kind of wants to go home to Lagos and make a new work there. Um, you know, it's very complicated. Um, so I wonder if you can say a little bit about uh, maybe the whole story of, of Billy Bao the person and Billy Bao the band, and then of the impulse to go to Lagos and, and make this work. Okay. If that's not too big. You know. Okay. I'll, I'll start with just a few bits. Um, so Billy Bob discovered punk rock in 86 in Bilbao and he fell in love with it. He gave uh, some, uh, he allowed him to, to think differently a bit, a bit about music. Before he was just a songwriter and he wanted to Please, people, but punk rock, he could uh, explore the rage and anger that he felt uh, he couldn't otherwise. And he was in Bilbao, and Bilbao was changing around that time. Um, however, the punk rock at that time there, it was pretty much either um, bad people who identified as Basque, or then maybe a more anarchist kind of tendency, and of course there was um, immigration, but it was immigration from within Spain of uh, Bilbao is a kind of, it has a very strong industrial base, and a lot of uh, immigrants from other parts of Spain kind of came to Bilbao. Uh, however, uh, Bilbao was one of the first uh, to come actually from uh, Sub-Sahara, from Nigeria. Um, Billy is a strange character, very strange. It's very difficult to define him. He's so strange I don't know if I know him, but I can always imagine him. Um, so, for example, uh, you mentioned going to um, uh, from Europe to uh, Africa, but for me, then the interesting thing is, you know, the changes that we are going through. And in Bilbao, there is a very strong and um, big, well, big, relatively big Nigerian community there, which, uh, which for the previous record, we engaged uh, with it and we learned about contemporary Nigerian music and uh, different. Uh, issues that are going on and the difficulties of, uh, that uh, Nigerians are going through, through the crisis, but also how they also have mechanisms uh, to deal with that crisis that we are not used to because we are so used to a living standard that is quite high, so then when that kind of gets questions or it gets uh, <coughs> It's no longer there, we panic. But so um, for the previous record, we already engaged with the Nigerian community in, in a much more strong way. So Billy was ready to go back to Lagos. Uh, and went with him, we followed him. 
And what we found there is uh, it's, it's interesting that now Europe is economically kind of not in very good shape, depends on which parts of Europe, certainly uh, Spain is not in good economic health even though now it's supposed to be, you know, uh, growing. But uh, but Lagos as a city, it is actually, uh, it's, it's second uh, fastest economy, uh, city growing in, in Africa. So you have a lot of expats going down, especially people uh, in the creative industries, but more like music and film, you know, expats from other parts of the world that come back to, to Lagos. So, so I guess people were there were not surprised to see Billy coming back and trying to do something because there's many people going, you know, it's, it's actually on the rise and there's many people uh, doing work in Lagos. Um, Uh, and then the, the, when we were there with the musicians, uh, at the beginning, people, I mean, people have been ripped off, you know, uh, there, you know, people, musicians that go and want to do, uh, musicians that come from different parts of the world and they want to do an Afro, Afrobeat record and then they, you know, they get the records, they do records that can have certain uh, repercussions or sell some copies. But, but then uh, don't give enough credit to to the musicians there. But what when we were there, we saw, we told to the musicians, well, we don't know what we're doing. You know, we we actually will do a Sonic Monster, which is what we've been doing previously. The records that are come from maybe half punk as a basic kind of core, but we kind of use it as a as an object, almost uh, as an object to be saved, transformed, and manipulated, either by taking ideas of conceptual art, of uh, music on credit, computer post production. So we do uh, angry records with very weird production that hopefully. Says the, the listener. So we, we are very much uh, influenced by noise in those regards, and and this was not going to be different. But the, what it was going to be different is that we would have to we are going to collaborate with um, people whose uh, music uh, background and histories are uh, quite different to ours. I am not even much exposed to either punk, to noise, to improvisation, to complete music. Um, so we, they, we had to take out of the comfort zone in order to generate some music material that they will have enough uh, contact to to work with, and they will have to take uh, get out of the concert zone, comfort zone in order to engage with these weird sounds. And this is what we did. So, okay, we were engaging into something that we they didn't know what's gonna come, what was going to come out of, out of that, and we also didn't know. But in the process, we kind of had to wrestle with this question quite a lot. It's, it's like all the way through. And, uh, and the way that we kind of reply it is by the process that we've been in, engaging with. I try to make it as weird as possible. So, so to, to, to do something that it will uh, challenge us or it will, it, it will, no, no, it will, it wouldn't reaffirm our position. Uh, and then, this kind of brought up questions that are much wider, which has to do with the role of music uh, in its society. And you know, like I mean, like uh, we come from a resort of modernism that kind of tries to break its own conventions and tries to kind of push things forward until it's breaking apart and there is no, you know. 
not kind of uh, way out that you have to deal with the kind of the breach of, of what you have in front of you, certain big forms and uh, ideas and, and ideologies. Well, in there, one thing that, I mean, maybe it's not that surprising, but it's, it certainly kind of hit me, is that all the musicians that we dealt with, they believe in God. And that's, um, I don't know if we can make a connection, you know, between the interest in a music that really tries to break apart whatever comes to its way, which is, I guess, the music that I've been, and I think we've also been interested, you know, too. And there, the, the, the lack of kind of interest uh, so far, I mean, there's a lot of noise in the records that you hear there, but whether the noise is intentional and has the same characteristics and the same kind of ideas behind is, 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 is another question. And I guess this is something that we don't have an answer, but through doing it, we're trying to explore. Yeah, it's interesting that you, you mentioned Rene Green, you know, that kind of, uh, like, in, in relationship to Hal Poster's uh, article, because I, I asked her about, you know, yeah, I'm playing with this band, Billy Bao, and I explained to her what we were doing, and, you know, like, you know, like, uh, and, you know, basically, what do you think? Is it ethically correct, or there is something dubious? And I, and she said, just push it, just go for it, just deal with all the contradictions that emerge from it. Don't try to <coughs> play in, in, a, in what you think is a kind of morally or ethically uh, safe ground. Just go where the work lets you, and then from there on you, you will be able to, you will have to deal with the consequences. And for, 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 for us, that was a kind of, uh, a point that allow us to keep kind of letting the, the logic of Willy Bao, which is kind of self-collapsing in itself and trying to grasp whatever is on its way and deal with it in, in this, I guess, dialectical manner and then see what it comes out. Um, In uh, Hal Foster's essay, the two, um, well, it's kind of a funny essay. So for the first 80% of the essay, it sounds like he's dismissing all this kind of work that he calls ethnographic, Mark Dion and Rene Green and others. And then in the last 20% of the essay, give or take, then he says, but wait, the, the real problem is these other kinds of works that either don't, uh, don't try to identify with another at all. They just, uh, you know, are very insular in dealing with their own culture and their own traditions and no acknowledgement of any world outside of that. That's one serious problem. The other one is over-identification with the other, where you sort of put on their clothes and, and become them in a way that, again, um, excuses you of any wrongdoing or uh, guilt or complicity. So he says that in the end, the last 20% of the essay, he says that these ethnographic projects ultimately can be a way out of, of those two more severe problems of over-identification or dis-identification, if they include two things. And those two things, he says, are framing, which he means uh, a way of sort of showing what the project is, so that you can sort of look at it from outside and understand its intentions and its boundaries. And then the second one is critical distance, that the project itself can sort of step away from itself and look at all of its own problems. Um, so I, I wonder, since the Lego Sessions is, is not in the world yet, I wonder if you've thought about how you're going to frame it and and maybe try to um, include a sense of critical critical distance in the work itself. It's, it's, it's interesting because that kind of, it's, it's, it presupposes actually uh, the possibility for this critical distance and that the framing will be kind of stable. So it, it kind of, it, it does presuppose a top-down perspective as you are able to read uh, either what the framing is 
and on the other hand to be able to distance from it. And this is something that I find deeply problematic. Um, <coughs> Because if we are dealing, we are dealing with noise. I noise we could say that is that which challenges its own framing, because it's, it's, it's that which is between the sender and the receiver, but it disturbs that relationship. So I we try to do something where the framing is extremely. Uh, it's, it's challenge itself. It's, it's, in that sense, we're interested in noise. That it's opaque. It's we even ourselves don't know how to take it, and it will take time for us to decipher it. And the longer that it takes, the most interesting the work will be. So we don't want to presuppose that we know exactly what we're doing. You know, it's, we're doing it. We engage with it immanently critical, but we also want the, what we're doing to take us somewhere that we don't know yet where we're going. So that also implies that the critical distance is not... Um, we don't have it. We are involved with it. It will take us, hopefully, and then from there, the slowly, it will be generated, but to think that you are able to do that, it, it, it already implies a very... Uh, you will have to, basically, because you have to frame it, you have to state what the work is uh, in clear terms. Uh, and for us, this is extremely difficult. We deal with noise and conversation, and these things are extremely elusive. They have different parts of the process, of course, at each part of the process there will be a certain amount of framing. But to say that this is it is, 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 uh, is, is not what we want to do. Okay, okay, a record has kind of certain material limitations. Yeah, but it's not just what we, we are doing. There is also social relationships that are behind and they are, you know, that they've been engaging in the in this process, you know, so, so so we don't think that that's um, a, 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 an interesting way for us to see, you know, because yeah, it's presupposes as you can have a transparent uh, position in these given conditions, and these conditions are as opaque as as we have never been before. I mean, just just look. At what we are, you know, uh, this economic system is becoming more and more and more abstract and conditions our lives in ways that we don't, we don't, can yet explain. Otherwise, I think we will try to change things <coughs> drastically. But uh, it's, it's becoming more and more um, uh, complex, mediated, and we are involved with it, and we are not able to suddenly, you know, see it. From you know, see our you know our environment within this uh, from a distance. This is not to neglect the kind of problems that can emerge from this, but this is to engage with them in the most kind of uh, forceful manner. But I don't think in order to accept framing as um, as a useful tool in a way. That you have to that you have to think that it that it's totally transparent or that it that it, that it can successfully frame the object or whatever that is, or that it can be permanent in any way. I think you can accept that the frame can be temporary, that it can be you know fluid to some degree, that it's not a frame that stands like this, but a frame that kind of does this, um, and that it can, you know that it can change. The frame this month can be distorted next month, <coughs> distorted yet again. Um, and and it seems to me, uh, regardless of your feelings about framing a work, you will do it whether you want to or not. I mean, in previous Billy Bow records, there's um, sleeves and text that have a lot of information. In fact, uh, Mayo is nothing but text, front and back, text, 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 text. You know, 
which gives the listener, before they even take the record out of the sleeve, a frame, you know, something to start uh, using to contextualize the work inside. And the, then there's the sleeve inside of um, buildings for Bilbao, and also there's a lot of text and a lot of images. So there's framing that goes on. Um, and again, I don't think that that's permanent. I don't think it's fixed. I don't think it's, but I, but I think it has some effect on how anyone else might, uh, you know, experience the work. Um, and I was going to say one other thing about that. But, um, well, so I, you, you mentioned that, that the work isn't or can't be just the, the sound. It can't just be what you hear on, on the records when they come out, but that there's these social relations that are important to the work. So I wonder how that um, can be transferred. You know, the, the, the music can go on a record, and can, you, know, you can hear it to me, and I can put it on my turntable and listen at my house. Um, but the social relations are not something you can give to me and, and allow me to take home to experience. So how, does, how do the social relations become part of something we might call a work, as opposed to just some, you know, your social relationships that are not communicable or transferable in the same way that an artwork is, that music is? Can they be? Should they be? I mean, it's it's very tricky. I mean, it, it it's, it's tricky because already now it kind of presupposes that I. I mean, I'm I'm happy to talk about the this, the language sections, but um, <coughs> and I'm I'm not just really about my music, so. Um, so precisely because all these um, social relationships that are involved in making these records uh, are often not present and perhaps because I'm the one most associated with it and kind of have, uh, have food in, in their context. I, I, I can be here explaining this, but We are playing with the format of records, which we find exciting. We accept certain uh, conventions out of it. We deal with it, but just keep in mind it's a bit different. Uh, the dynamics that emerge, especially if you work collectively, and especially in this record, that is <coughs> people involved, you know. And, and, and everybody has contributed in their own ways, you know, and this is one of the biggest problems that occurs um, when you do a project like this and somebody like me is able to kind of talk about it, I get more recognition out of it in a context that perhaps other people don't have access to it. So, it often, these social relations so far, Billy Bob has been working uh, not positively in the sense, uh, positive in the selfish sense that I actually get more credit than I should, uh, but it's negatively because it's, it's, we are not able to kind of uh, explain to them, explain them. Uh, explain the complexity of this process that we've been going through. How to challenge that? I mean, I guess with this record we're trying to, you know, opening things up, but this is, I, I will see it coming that it will happen two ways, you know. It will, <coughs> it, it will, on the one hand, I think it will hopefully generate situations where some of these musicians that we're working with, we can, can work with them in different contexts. That that's, that'll be great. Uh, but uh, I will also see this crediting, uh, you know, focusing on Sally and I or something. You know, so this is it's a difficult relationship. That on the one hand, you know, is the I'm here talking about it, so you know, since I get to come here and to, you know, so, but on the other hand, it's also 
I guess it exposes the kind of uh, access that different people involved in the record can have towards it, you know, so. But uh, it also opens in, in this, this material in a different context. Um, I don't know how much time we have. I don't, don't want to keep you from dinner. Three minutes, Okay. <laughs> My question is you should take three minutes. I don't know how they can be answered. Um, well, I want, so maybe just to follow up on that with one last thought about, about music in general. And I wonder if you feel that music and maybe bands in particular, the kind of format of the band, as opposed to the orchestra or other kinds of groupings, is a kind of manifestation of social relations, that when we listen to music, when we listen to bands play together, we are hearing social relations. It is maybe one of the best ways to transfer a social relation to someone who's not in it. I, I think so. Um, I mean, and okay, um, especially if, if there is a certain kind of openness to what can happen or what can emerge out of that interaction. Uh, I mean, there is famously this improvisation, a AMM, you know, that when they improvise, you know, that, that these three people, you know, then with AMM there will be this four, four, you know, entity or whatever you want to call it that, that will emerge out of this. And, and I think uh, this is the most, um, interesting that can happen when you work with other people that are <coughs> something that you would not be able to do otherwise unless you work with these people in, in this way in which you challenge each other to go in unexpected places. That was three minutes, right? Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about the collective work and, and your collective, but uh, it seems uh, some sort of very open, very confusing, and very abstract. Could you specify what your collective is and, and how you work? It's, it's very conceptual the way you. You talk about social okay. raising it, but I don't have any feeling of the people you work with. Okay, so one chart <coughs> that we did uh, with the Billy Bao last Bao session it was really interesting because on the previous record we got in contact with the only guy uh, in Bilbao doing Naija Pop, this kind of pop that is emerging out of Nigeria, which is quite, you know, music industry, you know. Based. And um, so he moved uh, to Bilbao when he was uh, 15. And then we were, you know, he was in Lagos in Nigeria when we were in the record. So we invited him to play with us. And we had this long track and like some bass sit there. And we just asked him to tell his story, uh, the way, you know, how he moved, you know, from Nigeria, having to cross, you know, all the way to Morocco, to Algeria, have to cross to Spain, you know, that process that now is becoming more and more difficult. Um, so, and then that track, for example, is together with uh, Orlando Julius, who's playing the sax, Saxophone, and I don't know if you know him, but he's a kind of legendary Afrobeat uh, musician who has been playing uh, for a long time. And, um, and then uh, you had a drummer, which uh, he was very young, just playing there. <coughs> and we just... <coughs> and I think it's just do you use the term we 
It's yeah. kind of like a base structure, but you're, when you're naming samples, it's somewhere in the, in the periphery, after all of that. Yeah. Where's the base group? Because I only hear you talk. That's okay. what I was sure. asking. Yeah. So that's the, the core that the, you know, like, the, you know, this uh, Billy, Sabi, and myself, or Sabi, myself, and Billy. And, and, and Billy comes up with these monstrous ideas to weird, do very weird things. And there we try to twist it and generate uh, some connections or some things that will be very unexpected, at least for us, and hopefully for things of humanity, if they listen to it. Okay. Um, I think it's a <coughs> good thing for us. So, uh, if we have further questions, maybe we can continue going downstairs. Absolutely. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you.